Welcome to our weekly Friday Talk and Tour series when we share the opportunity to visit the studios of our wonderful artists and hear about their works and inspiration. These visits are brought to you by the Duncan McClellan Gallery and the DMG School Project of St. Petersburg, Florida. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, glad to have you here. It's a um, uh, wonderful Friday afternoon. Happy Friday. Uh, we have a great show today, and I want to thank all of you for being here, particularly our guest, uh, Alexis Silk, coming all the way from the Dolomites. And uh, so we've been doing Italy lately, um, so we're really happy to have you here. Uh, we've been lucky to have Alexis in the gallery uh, for a number of years, and she's done several shows with us. Um, and this is a great opportunity to see what she's been making lately. Um, so I do want to tell you the gallery is open now seven days a week. Um, we added Sunday, uh, about four hours. Uh, so if you're in town, uh, you have an opportunity to come see uh, some of the new works that we've just gotten in. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, and uh, we're open from about 10 to 4 most every day except Sunday. Um, but uh, we're glad to have all of you and I'm gonna ask Mary to take it away. Thank you, Duncan. Thanks everyone for being here and most especially thanks to Alexis for joining in uh, from the Dolomites and uh, it's late at night there, but Alexis has been working very hard to put this together for us and uh, to be able to share what's happening in her life with you. A few housekeeping uh, points before we start. For best participation, uh, choose the speaker view up in your right-hand corner. That way you'll be able to see um, primarily Alexis as she shares her screen. Um, also, please make sure you're on mute if, um, unless you have a real specific question, but we're going to really ask you to type your questions and comments into the chat button and we'll share those with Alexis as appropriate. And then at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll get a chance for live questions as well. So thanks again, and we'll turn it over to Alexis. Alexis, you can unmute yourself and show all the wonderful things that you've been getting ready for us. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanna thank Duncan, of course, and Mary, and such a wonderful gallery. We've been working together for so long, and I love uh, being here with, with them and with all of you. I wanna thank all of my wonderful collectors and friends and new collectors that are joining us this evening. I really, really appreciate all of your interest in, um, in seeing what, what I'm doing. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll, and I'll, so I'll have some images to share with you while I speak. So here we go. And um, so again, my name is Alexis Silk and I'm a sculpt, uh, do works in conceptual sculptures in blown glass and they're actually hot sculpted free form. So, um, so there are no molds in, in anything that I do. And the, I've been actually working in glass for the last 17 years. And uh, just kind of figuring that number before this, I realized time flies and uh, received my BFA at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago back in 2005. It's just a little background. And they didn't actually have glass, uh, but I, I did large scale figurative conceptual sculpture in bronze and iron. And um, because of a suggestion from my mother, I actually got involved in glass um, while still in school at the Art Institute and, uh, and, and just fell in love with it so, so much. So um, it, it really became my primary medium, medium ever since working at the, ever since then, um, back in 2004. So I go ahead and move through the pictures here. If I, if I may Let's see how I can do that. There we are. Um, so, oops, too fast. 
<laughs> so here's an image of where I am now, as Duncan had mentioned, uh, and Mary. I actually have been living in the Dolomite Mountains for the last 10 years, where I met my husband when I came here on vacation about 10 years ago. This is a picture, actually, I took uh, of, of the town where, where I live now. And um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, we, we love the mountains. Here I am with my husband um, and famous right in front of the very, very famous Trecime of the Dolomite Mountains. And my husband is Italian. And here we are with our almost two-year-old son and uh, expecting another on the way um, in just about a week. So talking to you, uh, hoping to, to not have skipped the meeting because I'm in the hospital. <laughs> but I'm very, very excited about that. So um, the other thing that is very exciting for me is the work that I do in Murano. So here, um, I, as I mentioned, I've been blowing glass for 17 years and uh, or say hot sculpting really is my, my specialty. But um, what I do, I've been working in Murano for the last 10 years and Murano is a small island uh, known for its glass blowing for centuries and centuries, thousands really of years it, that they've, they've just, one of the places that glass blowing originated. And I've worked there for the last 10 years with the same team of people here I am. Um, and this is an example of one of my, me holding one of my larger works. So the work that I make, has always been um, exceptional for its scale. And the studio that I work in in Murano really allows me to um, accentuate this aspect of my work. Uh, the team of people that I work with is absolutely incredible. I have worked with the same team. Um, the first year I worked in Murano, I tried three or four different studios. And then at the end of the first year, found the studio that I've worked in now for, for almost nine years. And uh, the team has just become my family. It's, it's really a ballet, but we're all brutes. <laughs> so, um, and, and I I actually have a, a special treat for us to watch the the uh, a video of me making one of my pieces at the very end of, of our presentation and um, and a tour of the studio that I put together for this for this event um, in, in the middle of the presentation. So that'll be a fun treat. You'll get to see those two things. So here are some um, just jumping right into the work uh, and Mary, please do interrupt if there are any questions uh, that, that people do have, I'd love to answer them. But jumping into the work, I just wanna um, talk to you uh, about the concept because my work is really very, very conceptual. And as I mentioned, I started out working in the, in the bronze and the iron. I really view myself as a conceptual sculptor sculptor um, and and that's where my each and every piece originates is with the idea that I'm trying to to portray to the world the and discuss and talk about perhaps change or accentuate what's important to me in in life and in the world here we have a piece that is a little bit um, more aggressive conceptually talking about uh, perception and objectification in society, how we perceive and, and treat one another often based on the surface. And um, so you can see here the title beneath the surface and I'm actually carving in this piece, I'm actually carving away the surface of the glass um, to reveal different layers of color below the surface as as we we all do show when you start to dig deeper into each of us our different colors and um, you can see here that the hooks actually really reference like a meat hook uh, and and showing that that sort of being objectified and put on display in the, in the box here we have um, a my probably second uh, most popular series. These are both very, very popular series of mine, the, the winged figure series. And I love the way that these, these, piece, these pieces are really meant to express 
celebration and strength in femininity and really showing how just this sort of uplifting both very sensual and strong being and um these i love how they came about they sometimes pieces come to me ideas as um in a more forced fashion where i really try and come up with what's important to me and this series really um came to me naturally it was a, just about a year after meeting my husband i just had to make them i didn't know where they were coming from it was just something that i absolutely had to do and um as many people know about glass blowing it's not something that you can just do overnight it took years to develop the the piece um and it was only once i had developed it that in retrospect i i was able to say oh my gosh that was why that was it was like when i met my husband these hooks were removed and wings sprouted in their place and i just was allowed to fly feeling both strong and um and 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 celebrated within my femininity. So I just love, love this series so much. Here's another image of this series. And you'll see a lot of the, all, you know, I work with a number of series and, and then really explore, um, explore them in different ways. So you'll see that as we go through the, all of the different pieces, these are all new works and, um, and, and you'll see how they're the same series are ex expressed in different ways. So here in the downward position, the wings are and really more of an embracing feeling. Here's another series that, um, that is a, a newer series that's been where I'm really trying to talk about nature and our connection with nature. I feel that it's something so important right now in in humanity and and the world and um so this is something that uh is very very close to my heart you saw where i live and how much i I really enjoy the mountains and, and nature so much as so many of us do and, and how critical and a part of us it is. So here you can see the flowers are just, um, you know, bathing the woman and, and accentuating her, her own beauty. So you'll see a number of different pieces as we go that relate to this series. I also want to take a minute to discuss the, the coloration. I am, I have grouped my works within three different my three different color series that I'm working on now. This series that you've been seeing so far is a Calcedonia series. Calcedonia is the name of a color that is very, very um, specific to Murano. There have been a couple people uh, who have been able to uh, create it in the US, actually one of which is a friend of mine, as well as shows an artist with Duncan McClellan, Elodie Holmes. She has uh, mastered this color and it is a secret recipe. Um, Careful, Elodie, they're gonna come and get you. <laughs> no, just kidding. She's, I, I really admire the way that she's been able to execute this in the US. So I can't say it's specific to, to Murano anymore, but it did come from Murano and it's, it's very, it is very specific to Murano in the sense that, that it's a secret recipe that was developed there um, by the Rosines. And, and so it, it's, what's beautiful about it is that it's, it's different every time. It, it's very hard to control the different color variations. So those nat those colored var the variations in the color come naturally within the, the glass because of the chemical properties that the glass holds and the way that it's melted. So these are very, um, very unique pieces. All of the work that I do is unique because I'm hot sculpting them in the blown glass, but these have that added, um diver diversity that they 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 can never be replicated this color it's different every single time even with the same melt of glass gathering the glass out just the si slightest change in temperature um will change it so getting back to the the concept this is my heart on a hook and this is talking about um just the everyday trials and tribulations that we go through whether they be you know pleasurable or or less pleasurable just talking about the way that we can feel really um you know the the visceral feeling of what we go through in life 
Here are some pictures of working in the studio in Murano. Um, this is the studio. Ours actually another fun tidbit relating to Duncan. He actually had uh, worked in this very same studio. It was just complete coincidence. I'd already been working with Duncan for many years when I went there and Duncan had already worked in this studio all the way around the other side of the world. And um, so it was really fun when I coincidentally figured it out through talking to the, the people at the studio and just one day figured it out and uh, really is a wonderful thing. It's, it's such a great studio and I know Duncan has very, very fond feelings for them as well. Um, so it, it, it's just such a special place. And so the, the, the person you're looking at here is actually the maestro that I work with. I am the maestra, the, the, the gaffer when we're working. I'm the one commanding the team, but I work um, very closely when I'm not there. He is the maestro doing whatever they're doing and um, because they're working all the time and then I come and I work um, several days a week doing my own work, renting the space and um, the, and the whole team and and everything it's it's really an a, an amazing setup and um the this person cristiano tozo is an incredibly talented worker who i work very closely with and, and have just a huge amount of faith and trust and um in my team really has become, you know, it, it, it's just, they're absolutely family. They're family and they're friends. And they, the work that I do, um, although I am, you know, of smaller stature and a woman and, um, and which I'll get into, but, and, uh, and not an Italian, they, they just have the utmost, we have such, um, equal respect for one another and and they I push them to their limits and beyond and the only reason they would uh, support me so much in doing what I do is you know they, they give me their heart and soul in every single piece and and that's it's just an incredible thing really um, here I am working on on a piece that we'll see later on and here I am measuring, actually um, taking measurements because I'm making a full figure. You can see the scale uh, in larger than life figure in, in molten glass. And you can see these kind of body parts lying around. It's uh, pretty funny funny to see when they're, when they're out of the kiln, just the whole body disassembled. Um, but here I am because I'm actually creating each piece in the hot glass and I have to have them so that they all match up and are um, not only proportionate with one another, but that the actual parts fit together precisely. And we'll have a vision of that piece at the very end of the presentation as well. Um, here again, I am working in the, the same studio, of course, um, and these pieces, I would just want to note how large they are. These are incredibly large pieces. They weigh up to almost half my body's weight. Um, it, it's just an unbelievable amount of glass to be manipulating off the end of the blowpipe hot. Uh, the, the work that I do is, is really... Um, unique for the scale that it is. Uh, I know it's unique in, in, in its concept and in, in its form, but but the, the scale that I am able to achieve with this team is truly, truly remarkable in hot glass. It, it's, there are not very many people in the world that, that work in this scale, hot sculpting. And the thing is, is that the, um, sorry, I'm trying to push forward and time here and these pictures are paused. Um, let's see why. There we are. Um, yeah, the, of course, now it'll jump forward. Yes, the, um, the thing about the scale with these pieces is that they, uh, I'm not gathering the amount of full of glass and then doing one last move and taking it off the blowpipe. I'm, Get, we're gathering the entire amount of glass we're going to use and then working it for the next several hours. So it, it's that's also something that is is ex exceptional about these pieces. 
Alexis, would you say that you're unique in working that way at that scale? Yes, I mean, I, no one is, <laughs> everyone is doing, many, many people are doing very interesting things. And, and I'm sure that, you know, I know Martin Blank sculpts much heavier pieces for just as long periods of time, but um, these, they, these are very unique. I don't, would never say I'm the only one doing anything, um, but they, they are very unique in the sense of, of the scale that, that they, that they are, or that, you know, and not all my pieces are this large, but they're, they are large in general. And the, the, the largest ones are absolutely unique in the scale that I am achieving. Um, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely something special. And something else to note that, um, you know, is, is interesting talking about, you know, both Murano, the culture, and, um, and the uniqueness is that until very recently in this past year, I was the only woman creating her own works on Murano. And I only knew of, I, I really do inform myself on this. And I only knew of two other women that were even assisting in studios. And that has only happened since the time that I've been working there. So um, I know that um, there was another woman working with, with Pino Cigaretto, but I, again assisting and not making her own work so it, it really it is a a very unique thing to in Murano and and here I am an American woman coming from the United States I really um to me it was natural to be a woman in glass but going to Murano Every man that I met there that worked in glass, including the people that I work with directly, had never seen a woman hold a blowpipe, much less command a team or create her own pieces. Um, so there was definitely, a, a, you know, a, a long period where, you know, both facing blatant sexism as well as just straight disbelief um, that I was the one that was actually making my own pieces and slowly but surely you know word got around no no you gotta actually see her and people would come to the studio to actually just watch that <laughs> I was actually the one making these pieces that were popping you know and, and I was I was um, as soon as the work started getting around getting out people seeing the work I was quickly approached by very fine art, high-end galleries on the island and have been selling with them ever since. And, um, and then, you know, more people saw the work and there was just kind of this, this disbelief really um, that I was the one that was actually creating these pieces. And, um, and, and, you know, although there was some incredibly vulgar and challenging um, sexism that I faced, 95% of what I faced was, um, you know, embrace being really embraced and respected. And, um, and I, I, as I say, you know, my relationship with the team, it, it is, it's not just the team, the entire island, really, once they saw the work that I was producing, and, and I was, you know, respectful and and myself in the approach respectful and solare sunny as they say um it, it was incredible how how unbelievably embraced i have been on the island and i just you know one might expect this this really different story but in fact um you know, it has just been a, a true joy. If anything, it may have even helped, you know, the guys were like, let me help you more. <laughs> so um, no, but it's, it's, um, and of course there was definitely some pushback, like, no, no, I got this. So, so that's, that's definitely, you know, something that I, I love sharing about and know is interesting for people to, to, to know, because it is a, a very um, interesting part of history. And, you know, one doesn't think there being a part of history when it's happening, but it, it, it inevitably, you know, is happening. So all the time to all of us. <laughs> so. so here's another example of, this is moving into a different color series. And 
here's an example of another life-size piece. So this, the, the steel frame that this piece is standing in is, is six foot tall. So you can see the figure is indeed life-size. It's, it's dimensions are larger than my torso. Um, and, and, uh, so, so this is, and of course, again, uh, this, um, series dealing with perception. So, and we'll go through a couple of the example of these pieces. I also make them not as large, but these are still quite, quite substantial torsos. Um, and, and you can see here is hanging from the single hook, which actually rotates all the way around. So you can see the, the three-dimensional form that, that she has. And something to note here about the color also is that um, uh, these, the colors that we use in Murano in our studio, ours is the, all made in-house. And Murano, not only in our studio, but in general is known for its richness and, and clarity of color. And you'll see that now in this series. The, the color is, particularly brilliant and and rich and cl clear you know they really pride themselves on having just these incredibly pure colors and in, and we are melting the color ourselves in pots of molten glass instead of being added to the piece as you go to the clear glass which is generally the technique in the united states we're actually gathering the molten glass, the colored molten glass directly out of the furnace. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, the, in the, the tour of the studio that I've prepared as well. So, but in this piece, it's interesting to note that you have this fade from blue to green. And, um, and, and that's a, a technique that, that I practice on a lot of my pieces as well, that here we have an actual aqua to blue fade. Um, that again, I want to show this, this variation that we all have within us, this, this way that we all change shades. And, uh, and that's done by doing a, a technique that in, the, in the studio to create that, that fade change. Here we have um, from blue to ruby. And again, I was dealing with this idea of perception and, and suspension, how we can feel, um, you know, treated for our skin and something I think important that we all talk about. <laughs> Here we have um, a, a, a boat series. So this is uh, definitely inspired by, by water and, and the fluidity that, that is the woman and, um, and, and the water and where I live is where I work. It's just all around me. This is actually inspired by a gondola shape as well as far as a boat. And here we have um, a love, I love this series. It's really um, showing the woman working more into abstracting the female form. And although the, the part of the figure that is the female is very much still um, clearly viewed, clearly the woman's body, it's going, it, it's, it's abstracting into what I see and view as almost energy coming off of, off of us. So I really do believe so much in, in our energy and, and, um, and how it flows off and around us and, and affects others and affects ourselves. And, um, and so this is trying to express that, that just flowing beautiful energy into almost an infinity symbol and those tendrils actually wrap wrap into each other so here's another example of that same series so i i, I just love this series how expressive it is it's simple yet yet expressive and here's also um another way that i've liked to abstract the forms. Um, and this is uh, really, but still, re but relating back more to nature. So these, the tendrils coming off of the top of the woman's body are meant to represent in a very abstract way, natural things like water or petals. So this is again, this abstraction, taking still the figure, but then really abstracting on it and, and referencing nature. How we're one with nature. 
And here's another piece where I'm really wanting to relate to nature and talking about um, embracing it, embracing the flower, holding the flower. This is again meant to, you know, show both protection and embracing of, of nature. Here's another um, piece in the winged figure series. Uh, and I absolutely love this piece as well. You saw it's, it's on the cover. And, uh, and this is quite large. So this is, this is four foot tall standing. So um, it really, really has a presence in the space if you can imagine. And, and, and all of my figures, just taking a minute to, to talk about, and, and you'll see in the video as well, but my work is is shaped free form directly in the molten glass. So, so I'm not using any molds at all. And something that's been really more developed in the last decade or two um, is this inside out sculpting, which um, is very unique to Murano. Murano, it's interesting because <laughs> um, sculpture generally, or you have blown glass vases or sculpture generally in Murano is solid. Um, the I've been doing the inside out sculpting since I first started working in glass. Uh, thanks, thanks to an ex of mine, he gave me a, a handmade pair of inside out sculpting tools for my birthday, like the first year I ever worked. And um, it's amazing how these little things change your life. And, uh, and, and have just been inside out sculpting ever since. And so I'm using these tools to actually go on the inside of the bubble to push out from the interior. And as well as sculpting on the surface, often even simultaneously. And this is partly what allows me to get to the scale that I can achieve is this, um, th this inside out sculpting because I, I'm, now able to sculpt bubbles incredibly thin um, to, to get these larger, larger pieces with using the same amount of weight. Here's another angel series. And again, just have that feeling of that sensation of um, she's on fire, <laughs> rising up out of the ashes, just, um, you know, burning and strong and sensual. So here is where I actually embedded a video, but I think it will play smoother if I play it directly from my computer. I, should I maybe stop and see, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> um, Alexis, Peter is asking uh, whether or not you've ever done a, a pregnant figure. Um, and I also was wondering whether or not you've ever done a Madonna and child, uh, you know, kind of concept. Um, I, I did a pregnant figure like so many years ago, long before I ever, <laughs> my first child was ever even a thought in my head. Um, and um, I don't know, as great as I feel right now pregnant, it's not something that I, I, I that uh, is particularly attractive to me. <laughs> it, All right, you're in the midst of it. It's, um, but I, and I did actually, um, although, you know, the, the growth of a human is such a miraculous, unbelievably miraculous thing. Um, I did, however, right in the last couple of days before I was not working in the studio anymore, right, right when I was finding out that I was pregnant this time, um, I actually attempted a new piece that's very abstract that is representative, not a Madonna and child, but the whole family, the, the very, very abstracted um, father and, and, and mother and child. And then you'd have to add another one. <laughs> we excited to see it. Yeah. Um, our yeah. Yeah, Arlene. Can I ask a question. Sure. Uh, I got a question. Uh, Bob, uh, do you want to go first? Oh, thank you. This is Bob Slater. Hi, Alexis. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And uh, I'm in thank Sacramento. You. So my questions were: To what do you attribute your success as the first woman to be able to do this so successfully? And can you talk a little bit about the relationship of your team members? You mentioned them. Are they also doing their own glasswork or? Are they more of an assistant role? Thanks. Thank you, Bob. 
Um, uh, the first question is, um, uh, success as a woman, and I imagine you mean on, on Murano. And, you know, I, I think that, uh, I, I don't know. I would like to say, um, I just am myself. <laughs> I, I, you know, I get out there and I put it all on the line when I'm in the studio and, and I'm, you know, and I'm smiling while I do it. I think that that really, I'm smiling when I do it and I'm smiling when I'm done. And, um, you know, and I really appreciate the people that are helping me and, and, um, you know, I, I do put it all on the line and, uh, and I think that they really can respect that. Um, coming from a woman and uh, that they're not used to seeing that and then you know and 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 it's I you know I like I I, I do do believe that that it it helps to be nice <laughs> so um, as silly as that sounds <laughs> um uh for those of you who know me personally <laughs> So, uh, and uh, yeah, and then the other thing is, I think that the, the guys in the studio are more a role that is traditional in Italy, which is more, um, um, to speak perfectly honestly, it's more of a factory setting where there is the owner that is more creating the are the owner of the studio that's more creating what will be produced and then they are producing it and that's what makes a true maestro in Murano is because they have the capability to do anything that's thrown at them so um that is kind of why people become maestros getting that title is because they 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 can they can make anything that's thrown at them and that's what happens they have you know, the, the owners get different ideas or commissions or orders and, and then that's handed down. So that's something that is really, really special and, and, and you know, not what I do. <laughs> I do very specialized <laughs> what I do best and, and, and then that, and that's my, my thing. But, um, but that's, and that's why I, you know, I don't consider myself a maestra. I'm really an artist that, uh, that, that, that makes my own work. And there is that distinction both in, you know, in, in title, there's that distinction there that I think is, is, um, is important to, to distinguish uh, because of the respect culturally here in Murano, if that's clear. So. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Yeah, I, I, have, I have a question. Alexis? Oh, Paul. Hi. Hi, Paul. <laughs> I thought there was only one true Phoenix Rising. Oh, titles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see her every day. Good. I hope you still love it. When are you coming back? When it's all, when this is all over. Okay. The fall. In the Alina fall. And I, I miss you. Thank you, Paul. We look forward to seeing Alexis too. <laughs> all right. Alexis, you have a video. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play. The, um, this is a tour of the studio of Murano. So hopefully uh, if this will help answer the questions as well. So, or maybe create more, who knows? And hopefully it'll so work right. technically, everything smoothly. We'll just cross our fingers. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alexis Silk and I'd like to invite you on a tour to see where I create my sculptures. Alexis, we're Hello. seeing your, your full screen right now. We're seeing your slide. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mary, what is it? We're seeing your whole slideshow right now. We're not seeing the video. Oh, you know, I think I didn't press change. Thank you, Mary. Hello, I'm Alexis Silk, and I'd like to invite you on a tour to see where I create my sculptures in molten glass. I'm here on the island of Murano, Italy, at the studio Ars Murano. 
Ars Murano is actually one a studio that's been here creating work in hot glass since 1982, and um, it's specifically known for its large scale, very heavy sculptural creations, which is exactly why I have chosen this studio to work at for the last eight years of my career. Um, I love them very much and they've become my family. So please join me to meet them and see where the magic happens, come on. office. Let me introduce you to one of the owners of the studio, father and son. This is the son, Matteo Vianello. Ciao. And Marina, who uh, runs and works in the office. Ciao. Let me show you some of the work that is produced here, both by myself and by the um, glass workers, the professional maestros that work here. All of these sculptures are actually created for, to then be sold at wholesale for the fine art galleries on the island of Murano and internationally. However, I'm not the only artist that works here uh, specifically making her own works, but also many other artists from around the world, such as Japan and France and Brazil, come to create their own sculptures here at Ars, to have them realized both either by the maestros or in my case, actually realizing them themselves. And here we are in my favorite place, the heart of the studio, the hot shop, or as we call it here, La Fornace. And this studio is really incredible because of the scale that it can, can accommodate and, and the equipment that it has, not to mention the amazing workers. And I'll introduce you to my team. I actually, normally working in the studio here are seven guys all at the same time working in two different teams. I actually always work with a team of three guys, the same three guys that I've worked with for many, many years. And as I said earlier, right in the beginning, they really just become my family. And, um, and then when I do my largest pieces, I combine both teams and actually I'm working with seven people, assistants, these amazingly strong uh, expert glass workers all together to make my most largest extreme works that weigh up to half my body weight uh, and require a team of eight of us working on them simultaneously. So uh, let me show you around here and I'll give a little more explanation because I, I really want you to see how incredible this part of the studio is. First we have, this is the, the real heart of the studio. This is the large uh, furnace with 4,500 pounds of clear molten glass. So we use clear glass a lot, but something that's different about the it here in Italy, unlike the United States, is that we also have colored molten glass, whereas in the US, usually colored glass is added cold to each piece. But here we actually are able to melt, uh, as, as we'll see in the composition room, um, the, uh, the glass being made into actual colored glass prior to being melted, molten. So here in this studio we have one massive tank of 4,500 pounds of molten glass as well as three other furnaces that each hold around 300 pounds of molten glass um, in two separate crucibles for a total of six molten colors all the time. Let me show you those now. glass studios in America, that here we don't have any glory holes. We 
generally reheat the glass directly in the furnaces using rolling yolks that are just attached to the shield. You can see here as Achille, one of the maestros of the studio, is actually reheating the glass directly in the furnace. This is very different from the way we work in the United States. When we do our extra large work, then we actually roll out the only really large glory hole that we have here. And I'll show you that now. When we do our extra large pieces, this is what we use to be able to reheat them. And as you can see, it's basically as large, large enough that I could sit inside of it. It works great for making my big pieces. This is one of the ways that we actually cool the glass down once it's done being made in the molten glass. It has to be cooled very slowly. And this kiln here is actually a walking kiln called a tempera in Italian. We don't have these as far as I know in America. So it's gas powered and it actually walks all the way from the hot shop here down and ends where the work comes out in the, in the cool working shop. So you can see down there, it takes about 24 hours and it ends at the end over in the other side where it's ready to be cold worked. Here in Italy, once the work is done, it on the pipe, instead of unlike America, knocking it off the pipe and being brought to the kiln, we actually bring the work over to the kiln still on the pipe. And it's turned very slowly in the kiln for as long as it takes to cool down. At that point, it's actually knocked off the pipe already at a very safe temperature. These kilns are all gas powered, unlike many in the US that are electric. And this allows us not only to do this type of work where it's cooled slowly to the right temperature homogeneously in the kiln, which is much safer for the work, but it also allows much larger pieces to cool at the right temperature evenly. This allows for a lot less breakage in the final processes, final parts of the process of the piece. Here I want to both show you the flame shop where there are very special pieces made with the glass that we melt in the furnaces that are then included within the pieces, like the aquariums you saw or other special detail components that go in the actual final sculptures, all done in the hot glass in the furnace. Certain pieces are created first here in detail in the flame shop. As well as, I would like to show you the person that works in the flame shop is actually also a very, very special person that is the maestro that I work with. This is Cristiano Toso, oh. like the father of the studio. He's the one that really makes everything happen here and uh, makes sure everything runs smooth and certainly makes sure that my pieces run smooth. He is, as you'll see in videos of me working, the, um, the, often the brains and the, and the bronze of a lot of what I do. Uh, so he's a very, very special person to me and my pieces in the studio here. I'd like to also introduce you to Simone. This is another very special person on my team who does incredible work and we've worked together for many years and, uh, and it's also really a lot of muscle on, on behind each piece that I make, so he's great. Here at Ars, we actually melt, create uh, our own glass that is then melted in the furnaces. So each time that we do the fusione, the, the uh, fondita or, or charging of the glass, all of the glass is actually created here in-house by mixing specific chemicals to create each color, as well as a base clear glass, as I explained before. Let me show you. Here we have our great guys that are doing the mixture of the glass composition. And uh, here you can see the actual glass being, being made. And this is clear glass that has actually had, had has had colored chemical, different chemicals mixed in to create each color. Here we are in what we call the cold shop in America and here in Murano, the Moleria. Let me introduce you to the guys and you can see a little bit of all of them at work. 
this is where we actually have are doing all of the the refining work on the pieces that have actually already come out of the furnace and the kiln in the hot glass and then we cut they're brought here to be able to be finished and refined and polished with cold cutting diamond tools um, so that they're they're completed after this process <laughs> This space is where the very last finishing touches are made to the work, gluing and packing. Here you can see a couple of my pieces that are just being completed uh, in the final, final steps of the process and ready to be shipped to their final homes. To you. Thank you, Alexis. That was wonderful. And we have some questions that came out of that. Um, uh, somebody, Susan asked, how far in advance do you need to order the molten colored glass furnace time? Um, the, um, I often on a day's notice. <laughs> okay. they, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, or, I generally, my, we're, she, the question specifically was, um, scheduling the time, my work time in the studio, correct? Yeah, it's, I generally, when I'm not pregnant and about to give birth, I'm working two days a week uh, in the hot shop there and two days a week, one to two days a week in the cold shop and finishing. So I'm generally um, in Murano uh, four, four days a week, two days in the hot shop and the um, it, it, it generally just is routine where, you know, I work Tuesday and Friday in the hot shop and, um, and then Monday and Thursday in the cold shop, or maybe the cold shop days bounce around more depending on the need, um, that I have, but, and, and, and of course, if they're crunched with an order, then I, you know, we work together. There's really, it's, it's very, it's very flexible and fluid. Um, but, but generally they're, when I'm in it, doing it all the time, pre-COVID, pre-pregnancy, there's just a routine. And, and, and if I, I mean, it is very, very flexible if I need to cancel if something happens or need an extra day, it's easy to fit in. And again, same thing with them. If they're, overloaded with work, then I'll step back while they, you know, get, get through that work. And, um, and when it's slower, sometimes I'll work for them. I'll work more, um, you know, to both to help them out and, you know, get, get some, some more stuff done. It is very, very, very expensive to work there. Um, uh, uh, unbelievably so. Uh, so there is, you know, that that to be considered when I am working, but generally when um, you know pre-COVID, pre-pregnancy, <laughs> that's not an issue. Things are flowing and work is really good. So, um, Peter also asked, why is it important to you to emphasize that you're a conceptual sculptor? And perhaps you'd like to show an image um, while you're discussing that because you know that relates. Yeah, um, yeah, I really, as I said in the beginning, I do not view myself. I know I am a glass artist. I work in glass. That's my primary medium. Glass is flowing through my veins. It's my passion. It's a, you know, a talent that I naturally have to sculpt the figure in. I'm not some proficient glass blower, but the sculpting is something that I do have a, a certain talent to. Um, but I, I consider myself a conceptual sculptor because that's what's really important to me. That's the reason why I am making these pieces. I'm not making them to make money or to just make beautiful forms. I'm making them because 
they give me purpose in life and in the world. I really create these because I go in the studio and lay it all down, as I said, um, and, and do it. I mean, it's it is fun, but um, but it's it it gives me purpose in life. I like the like the um, the different pieces that I'm showing. They I feel that these are really really important things to to discuss and hopefully you know I'm 38 years old I'm still naive enough to say that I really hope that I change the world and that you know one 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 sculpture and one person at a time um and create that new conversation it's not just about the person at the end of the day that lives with the piece but the conversation that it creates and rebounds and continues um, through many, many people, both, you, you know, the, and, and the feeling that they create, um, you know, these are, this is, this is really important to me. And I do believe that it affects, I, I don't believe, I know that it affects people's lives and it affects therefore the world because I, I get that feedback from, from you all, <laughs> um, all the time. I get that, that feedback and it, 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 it's so reaffirming of, of what I believe and what I feel inside myself about what I'm doing and what I'm making. So thank you. It's a very good question because it's something that I, that I really hold dearly. So thank you. Here is um, a detail shot of this piece. Um, I want to just mention the, um, the cane that I create. Uh, this is the, this, this is something that's a technique that's born from Murano, uh, this cane work where we're actually pulling cane in the colored glass and then it, it stretching and twisting. So it creates this, this woven effect. And then that, those cane are then inlaid within the sculpture, um, it, within a layer of the glass. So it, it's, a, it's not painted on or, or drawn on or on the surface or carved. It's actually these glass woven cane that we've created prior to creating the piece and then is actually embedded within the glass. And again, you can see in these hanging figure series, a lot of layering of color and technique to, um, to show that, again, that, that layering of, of, of personality. <laughs> and here we have actually in this detail, you can see there's an opening in the cane there, which is meant to show like this window through that, that exterior dress or what, whatever you, how you see that the cane works. So it's, again showing kind of a window um again this variation in the surface and 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 the detail work of the cane covering the whole figure here there's another detail shot so you can see this incredibly intricate cane work that that we're doing and here's just a very um simple, elegant form, again, showing a lot of um, grace and elegance, but I wanted to really incorporate the, um, the flower to again, show that, that, that connection with nature and that, you know, this flowing with nature. And uh, here is a piece that, um, something I've been working on for a while, but I think really is, is great considering what we've been, again, going through with the current times with Black Lives Matter. Um, you know, this is really talking about, uh, and this is, a, is actually a series I was working on prior to, to really rising to the surface in the last years more, um, but this is titled Humanity, and it's talking about how um, you know, the heart represents all of humanity and the different colored hands represent the different, all the di different kind people out there um, and how we need to together support one another and, and therefore humanity as a whole. So it's also a piece that I feel strongly about. So again, relating to that concept question is, it's important. Um, 
here is another uh, um, example of the, the heart on the hook. This is actually much, much larger. The first one was more life size. This is actually quite large. The heart is more more head size, <laughs> um, uh, giving you obviously a different feeling when you're looking at it in person, but but the same the same concept. And this is uh, bringing us to one of my absolutely most recent series. Um, I actually took a course uh, with Martin Yanetsky, who is an unbelievable uh, figurative sculptor. Um, and something I was already interested in, he, he does primarily, as I do bodies, he's, as I'm known for bodies, he's known for heads. And, and that was something I really wanted to expand my, um, my toolbox and uh, I'm just so in awe of his work. And, and so I did this course and it really, really did help me. I wanted to be quite literal in my sculpting. I've done heads for a long time, but wanted to move more, more literally, um, literal representation. And these really, um, I'm really happy with the progress uh, that, that, that they've made. I think the, the gesture and the elegance is really, um, really shows and and I wanted to yeah talk move into talking more about the mind and thoughts and um as I grow and develop so do my ideas so uh yeah these are something I'm really happy with and you can't really see but she has a flower in her hair so you know I always am um, going back, just that little touch of nature, I, I do love incorporating in the work, and and these really, I think, show that that inner reflection. Um, here is another hanging figure, and again, that detail of the cane work, and another angel, and I think there's a detail shot here too. And this is just very fine threading on the cane work. And in the wings, you can see in this shot, there's actually a pretty good example of, it's actually silver inlaid, actual silver leaf inlaid within the wings. So that's actual silver. And I, I do often use, use that, especially in the wings. And probably the classical influence of living in, in Venice or near Venice, working in Murano. And here again is another, another face showing the, the, the contemplation, this idea of inner reflection. And here is a, a, probably my most challenging piece that I've, I've done yet. Uh, this is in, almost seven feet tall. It's uh, a full figure in hot sculpted glass done in components. There was an image of me working on it in the studio there when I was doing the measurements. This is what I was trying to measure to get it all to fit together. And you can really see, I mean, it, it um, and I, I actually designed the whole structure uh, to be able to, to have it technically work. Um, and, and yeah, it's called a money sleeve. So again, the concept, I, this piece was born out of the concept of, of our, you know, connection with money and whether, you know, you're the richest man in the world or a bum living on the street, we're all, we're all, um, connected to this, to this thing. Um, so I, that, you know, this, from there, we could run in a million directions, but I think it's something that, that is important and, um, you know, rules the world. So, uh, and, and so the, the way that it's a money slave, she's actually bound by, those are actual real coins that are um, binding her cuffs. She's decorated by them on her, on her skirt there, but she actually has handcuffs on where with a chain connecting her hands and her feet. Um, you can see, uh, as I point to my own screen, <laughs> Um, it, so she's actually bound by, by cuffs on her ankles and her, her, her wrists with the coins. So. And Arlene asks, is the, is the skirt metal? And I believe it is. Yeah. The, 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 and, and actually there's a trick there. The skirt is actually supporting the entire figure. Um, but yeah, so the skirt is a uh, laser cut. Uh, metal stainless steel on the base as well as the bracelets around her legs and 
arms and then she has actual stainless steel cuffs around her her wrists and ankles um and then and then dangling actual euro coins from her from her skirt but that's actually she's chained together by those coins found and that is it for the artwork. And then I now just have a video to finish um, if we have time. Uh, oh my goodness. I love to talk. I told you, Mary. <laughs> That's okay. It's all worth it. It's fascinating. A few people say hello. Um, let's see. Joe and Paulette. Um, let's see. Eva Klein. Uh, wondering if you are still creating heads with headdresses, which I believe you've you've done um, about five years ago, maybe. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, so, um, I've actually done with little figures actually inside the headdresses to um, represent the, the cage when we think about people, which now is coming, gonna circle back around into my life with little ones. <laughs> so. So, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of fans here, Tracy Hayes and Carolyn Spears and Roger. So. Sure. Let's see. Let's see your final um, studio tour. I think this is. Correct? It's actually a video of me working in the studio. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah. So I'm always love love. This is the really fun part of what I do. So um, apart from talking to all of you, which I'm so sorry, it's not in person because I would love to to see all of your all of your faces and hear all of you as well. So thank you for all being here. I really, really appreciate it. So let me go ahead and share new here. Thank you, Alexis. This is wonderful. Thank you. Tell me if there's anything um, not working about this. And uh, other than it being choppy, which is just a technical thing, with the the um, the call. But um, I have the music turned down so I can talk a little bit over it because we all know I love to love to talk. <laughs> so um, this is uh, we're working on. This is the most recent one of the most recent life size pieces that I did as a commission piece for a client of mine. And, um, and uh, it has the cane work, as you can see there, you'll be able to see the cane in the glass. And you can see my team doing uh, Cristiano Tozo, the maestro, and the team doing the majority of the setup with all of my other pieces that are not the life size pieces, I do all of this work, the setup, the gathering of the glass, but on the life size pieces, as you can see, this block is just huge, takes two people to hold. Um, I, it, it doesn't make sense. I, first of all, physically would not be capable of, of gathering and, and holding the blowpipe with this much glass on it. Um, and secondly, it just doesn't make sense for a single person to do all of that work because it's so taxing physically um, that when it's time to sculpt, which is what I do best, the part that, that, I, that I do best, is um, I need to be fresh. I need to have all of my energy. So, um, and, and I repeat, you know, I wouldn't be capable um, on my best day to, to maneuver a blowpipe with this much glass on it. I mean, we're talking 60 pounds of glass moving, flopping around on the end of this blowpipe. And, and actually it takes, as you can see shortly, they'll, uh, we have Simone backing him up. Um, so often there's two guys holding the blowpipe and two guys on the crossbar. So there's actually four, four people often take to maneuver the blowpipe. Um, so again, referencing back to this exceptional scale, but this is a preparing the shape for the figure and I'm indicating to them, you can see them looking at me, I'm indicating to them the, the angles and the, the length and it's very hard work. <laughs>
So this is where I'm actually cutting in the what's called a jack line. And uh, that's where it's gonna come off of the blow pipe. What's on the pipe, what glass is on the pipe we can't use. And this is the actually waste, the waistline of the figure. Now you can see both guys turning the pipe together. I cannot emphasize enough what an unbelievably credible, incredible team I have. They are so amazing and all the work I do would not be possible without them. And start to see the figure taking shape of the legs. <laughs> and something else to mention that really you cannot see from the video is the amount of heat that's coming off of this amount of glass is undescribable. I don't know if you noticed, I had like a, my bandana around my head when I was putting in the waistline. I've had times had like a mustache of blisters doing just from the radiant heat after doing these. Watching this makes me miss being in there. <laughs> when will you go back? Oh, um, the plan is very, very early September. So that's what I did with Sebastian. Start started slow, but about six weeks after. Okay. Again, starting in slow, not with these. <laughs> So now what you just saw is we transferred the piece from the blowpipe to the punty. And, um, and that way it frees up the top of the figure to be able to, to work on that. So I can't really access the top of the piece until we do that transfer. So now the goal guys are trying to keep the legs hot where I'm not working on the legs anymore so that they don't explode and break while I'm able to sculpt the top. And you'll notice we keep going back to that reheating unit. It has to go back in every 60 seconds or so, not even sometimes depending on how hot they are when they come out. You know, every other minute we need to be back in that heat. Otherwise, the, not only will I not be able to work the glass, but it will explode. So 
it's a constant back and forth. So it, and again, they're just incredible. They're using this crossbar and there you have to be so fast because every second they take extra, that's time that we'll have to do another heat because I wasn't working. Um, Joni's asking how you protect your back and your spine with such strenuous activity. Uh, <laughs> use it or lose it. <laughs> Probably just... Um, Joni gets that. Yeah, yeah. Doing it all the time, you, feel, you build up those muscles and, um, you know, some of the guys who are, you know, doing a lot of the lifting wear back braces, you know, the, the brat back support. But um, yeah, it's funny, my, because you hold the blowpipe always in a certain way, my left side of my back is when I'm working all the time is um, substantially stronger. You can like see it like <laughs> it's unbalanced. And Anne is asking, how long is this process uh, from start to finish for a figure? For this size figure, about three hours. So um, from start to finish for about, you know, and depends, but um, yeah, for, for this, this size figure, about three hours from the time we gather the glass, the first gather till um, when we're putting it in the kiln there. So it's, it's, for those of you who don't know glass might sound like not very much time, but it actually is an incredibly long time to be working on a single piece of glass, especially when it weighs that much. I mean, these are it's a very, very strenuous process. Thank you so much, Alexis. That was really, really- Yes, exciting. thank you. And uh, Duncan, I know that Alexis has said she's uh, hoping to come back uh, to the US and next year. And so we have to be sure to have her come to the gallery. Oh, uh, we're <clears throat> expecting it and we'd love to see you. Um, was that Renzo in the, uh, in your film? Yeah, in Renzo. The oh, please say hi to him as well. And, and Marina, it was great seeing her. Um, and some of the other guys that I remember. So thank you so much for this, Alexis. This was really wonderful. Um, and uh, I hope everybody will uh, get on our website uh, and take a look at the catalog. You'll be able to see uh, all of the pieces that uh, she's been making lately. Uh, so congratulations on your new uh, baby uh, boy. Uh, and uh, We'll be anxiously waiting um, to find out uh, how you're doing. And thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you again to, to you, Duncan and Mary and the whole gallery there. I really, really appreciate you guys. And I really appreciate all of you, all of you out there watching so much. You know, it's, it's, um, it's you guys are the why I do this and, and, and I love love so much what I do and love so much all of you and 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 really do appreciate you taking the interest in coming on and taking so much all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.